Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! I want you to know... That as we sit here in this gorgeous Montreal studio, which is really just sort of a, it's not Airbnb, but it's almost like it, um, that we've rented here. Um, we got this gorgeous view of the mountain here. We've got uh, a great view of the downtown, some of these old gorgeous buildings, and Steve and Jesse stayed out way too late last night, and I just want you to know that. Way too late. Uh, don't include me in that. No? Some, someone at this table left early and didn't drink. Oh, did you leave early? Did I leave before you? No, I (laughs) left. What the fuck is wrong? I guess we know who drank. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Do you not remember me saying goodbye? (laughs) Oh, I do. After Anthony Stewart invited you to the fishbowl. No, you're right. Sorry, I do remember hugging the Slender Man, and uh, I guess that I guess that was you. Yeah, my bad. My bad. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I thought it was Jack Skellington. You went yeah. back to Slender Man? Just, I got to go with every tall, skinny character. Uh, I just, I just got to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so listen, it was a crazy draft day yesterday. Lots of trades, lots of free agency stuff, lots to, to, to kind of catch you up on. But I want to start with this because it was a pretty uh, unbelievable tweet to get. Um, and I think it falls right into where Steve's coverage happened and where uh, Jesse and I's coverage happened. Uh, we'll get right into that. So, Jesse, you, we ha- you got this tweet yesterday after all the drama of the first round, especially in the first five picks. Yeah, I don't have my phone with me. I don't know. I think I left it in the bedroom. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> this person may DM me saying they put, they put some money on uh, uh, Slavkovsky going first when we talked about it with Dave Bastel. Okay. From Sports Interaction. So, at the time of their bet, the, uh, the odds were six to one. And they put about hundred and forty dollars. Oh down. my god! Oh, pretty damn good. Yeah. Wow. Solid. Yeah, solid it's around name. like a seven hundred dollar return. Wow. Yeah. Great, great pick. Amazing. And you know what's interesting? You know, we we when we got here, Shane Wright. People were still like, "Oh, it's Montreal. It's Shane Wright. Jeff Molson's post uh, pulling for Shane Wright. He's worried about the headlines. If you go with Slavkowski, um, you know that that sort of thing. And by the way, uh, if I. If I'm Jeff Molson, I've just hired this new management group. I kind of want to let them do their thing, right? Like get out of oh, their yeah. get out of their kitchen. But um, Slavkowski does go number one, and we sort of got the sense just being in the city, talking to people, talking to people around the game, and more and more of them were switching. They would have been said they would have said right a week ago, and they were saying now, no, we pretty sure it's Slavkowski. We, uh, I think it was. I want to say Corey Pronman was the first one. On this, like he about a week ago, Mackenzie too. Yeah, when Mackenzie well, came out, it like exploded. But uh, yes, Mackenzie said Slavkowski first. He was first mm-hmm. on that. But Pronman, I'm pretty sure nailed the top four. Yeah, Pronman's list yeah. when you go back is the most accurate. Yes, it, it is. His, He's his amazing. Picks have been incredible. And like what you're saying, Adam, is kind of when we got here and we were talking to people within the the industry. Um, you kind of figured out that. The top five had their guys, yeah. and they weren't really wavering off of it. Well, especially the top three. Like, Arizona always wanted Cooley. Uh, New Jersey always wanted a defenseman, so it was going to be Juracek or Nemich, and then just ended up being Nemich. So Shane Wright was going to fall if Montreal didn't want him, and then we heard Montreal didn't want him. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's unbelievable. And you know what? I got to talk to a bunch of the prospects last night, and, and one of them was Shane Wright, and he was super positive. Like, he, I think he knew... Probably and had some time to prepare. You got to talk to somebody back in the truck. Why? We don't need lower lower corner of the screen Shane Wright cam when he's not getting picked. Yeah, that's holy smoke. Oh, oh, that's a, a, that's every on. draft, though. Nah. That is every draft. I, 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 you know what? I think that. you have to do that. You do have to do that shot. I know they're kids, but you have to do the shot. It's the entertainment value. Hey, here's Logan Cooley going third and Shane right in the bottom corner looking sad. You got to do it. It's happened to everyone, man. So you talked uh, to him, what did uh, he say? Cam Fowler was a bad one. Like, he was supposed to go third. I don't in, remember that. In his, he was supposed to go third. He went 12th. And they just kept showing him, and he's like, okay. Remember oh. remember uh, the McDavid thing where he uh, could could have gone to Edmonton or Toronto and he went to Edmonton? Oh, that was the draft lottery. And then he just death stared the draft lottery balls? <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I know we all pleasantly like to forget that that happened, but that really happened. Yeah, I mean, a lot of time has passed, but no, like, that that was a thing. And the the way the early first round, like the first four or five picks broke down, I kept saying Shane Wright should go first because it reminds me of McKinnon versus uh, Seth Jones. I think I got it wrong. It was more like 2011. Because that draft, first overall was Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Second overall was Gabriel Landeskog. Third was Jonathan Huberdeau. And fourth was Adam Larson. I think at one point, all of those guys were ranked number one by someone or other. I used to take Adam Larson in all my uh, fantasy drafts in Chow because he had an A-plus uh, potential. Fourth overall pick, man. Yeah. Fourth, and, the, and fifth, Ryan Strong. The difference with that, cool. though, is Shane Wright has been the number one pick since he's 15. Yeah. When he was an exceptional status player, you know? And in this case, this kind of flip-flopped around and nobody really knew. But in Shane Wright's case, up until two weeks ago, for three years, that was his spot. Yeah. And it's, a, it's I don't know if it's a shame. It's like, not a shame. I like it's your, odd. It's odd. <laughs> yeah, but it's odd. <laughs> we picked the most exciting draft to go to in years, and I think yeah. you're absolutely yeah. Slavkovsky. Mm -hmm. You saw him go before, and he was on the red carpet, and we were watching a little bit of TSN, a little bit of Sportsnet, and doing the you know their their coverage, and they were talking about uh, or they interviewed Slavkovsky, and I think TSN had him on the red carpet, uh, and uh, and and I, the person said like, "How do you feel about tonight?" And he's like, "I'm going to be the best person uh, in 20 years when we're all retired. I'm going to be the best person that came out of this draft." He's real seek and destroy. I right? love that. Yeah. Love the confidence. And he, so we didn't end up getting him uh, for an interview for the stream, and we were bummed about that. He walked by us about a thousand times, huh. and, and then we didn't see him for like an hour, hour and a half, something like that. And then when the stream finally wrapped, we did a three and a half hour stream. We didn't even make it to the end of the first round. Um, I was going to change, and I see Yuri Slavkovsky mm -hmm. still doing stuff. Wow! So that guy was getting dragged around for basically four hours, and he has a great smile. He's just perfect like, teeth, so jacked. His buddy got drafted to the same team. Uh, yeah, that's that pretty cool. cool too. So, so there, it's footage does exist of his reaction. I don't know where it is. Yeah, the, so the big got hug. It. Sorry, the big hug. Like no, um, not not the big hug. I know what you're talking about. Where okay. um. What's who is wh who's the guy? The who Montreal's there? other pick Nassar? was uh, Nassar, yeah, yeah, Philip Nassar. So uh, no, there's someone. I think it's the Montreal Canadiens themselves. I imagine they'll release it on social. Has the footage of the moment Slavkovsky realized his teammate or his childhood friend got drafted to the Habs, and supposedly, <laughs> like he was in the middle of doing a bunch of stuff, and he was like. I want to go see him. And they're like, you can't. <laughs> you got to wait a bit. Yeah, he was, he was really amped about it. Well, I think, I think it's going to be fascinating, um, you know, to see some of the headlines today. I had a look at the Gazette and a few other places. People seem to be warmer to this than I think the, you Slavkovsky? know, Slavkovsky, uh, with people seem to be warmer within the Montreal Canadiens organization and without fans seem to be okay with it. Uh, I know there was some trepidation within the organization, uh, about what? how is this going to play? We pick a non-Canadian at the top, right? And Shane Wright's been that guy, like you said, Jesse. Everybody's been talking about him for three years, and it looks like it's going to be all right. Now, I want to talk about the drama of Shane Wright falling. Okay. And I say Shane Wright falling, I mean, he felt he's still fourth overall, like whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. The only time that really matters is the day of. And then today, as Shane Wright and Slavkovsky and Cooley and uh, Nemich and Juracek, they all wake up. Uh, now the real work begins. Now you got to play in the NHL. Um, we were talking on the stream, and Jesse and I both picked Slavkovsky. And, and then we sort of kind of got into the thing, okay, well, what if New Jersey really wants a defenseman? And we thought we had heard through the grapevine that New Jersey really wanted a defenseman. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, so if he falls past New Jersey, and Arizona's done the majority of their scouting on Logan Cooley, and they're comfortable with him, then they're probably, they might go Cooley. Steve, Adam isn't telling you the whole truth. What? At that second pick, we oh. knew New Jersey wanted a defenseman, and Adam was blinded by his home podcast bias. It's true, true. He said they were going to go with David Yurichek. Yeah, I called Yurichek. Because he's an Ooh, Alan Walsh client, I and I knew they'd pick Nemitz. So, nerd. So, but <laughs> I, did, I, did call a, I did call a slide. You did. Call a slide. Yeah. And so when, when Arizona picked Cooley, that's when our I think our, that's when our podcast hit its peak. It was or our our live stream. It was we were just like, whoa, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, 
Seattle's Which was be. an hour into the draft. Yes. The well, guys the fourth pick. Is, was it a little slow for you? <laughs> no, it went it went by incredibly fast and Good. then incredibly slow. Oh, okay. So we didn't make it to the end of the first round, and the producers gave us permission to wrap early, and I knew it was time to wrap because we were high energy, high energy, high energy the whole time, and then I noticed uh, the Blackhawks picked 25th, and I just didn't react. <laughs> I was just like... Okay. Yeah, I think like, when, when the de- I, I ran out of energy, I just didn't have it anymore. When Detroit picked Marco Casper, yeah, Marco Casper, he, we, he was at the the, the bar last was, night. No, was he at the bar? Yeah, he was yeah. wearing the his whole jersey. Bar applauded. Oh, yeah. that's awesome! It was a bold move to wear the jersey. I, <laughs> you know what? I respect also, it. I respect I mean, it. Strap weekend. Um, Sorry. Yeah. No. 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 It's cool. Uh, I think it's a. Uh, uh, it's it's really exciting. Obviously, that that fall, that Shane Wright fall, was one of the more entertaining entertaining things. But here's what I think. And also, this, Adam, give us a little bit more credit. Marco Casper went eighth. He went we, eighth. We were a little more hyped. We were right, we faded hyped. around like twenty two. Yeah, we were really <laughs> fading. Yeah. Um, especially if the Leafs made to their trade. But I I want to say this. I think. The Shane Wright Redemption Revenge Tour is going to be very interesting. Every oh, yeah. time he plays the Canadians, every time he plays New Jersey, and every time he plays Arizona, you know that Shane Wright's going to bring his game for the rest of his career. Well, it's interesting because, like, who is Seattle's rival? I would say they don't really have one. Maybe the Canucks eventually. They will be, but they're not. Right. They're not. And so before they had even played their first game, I was like, oh, it's interesting. There's already this sort of built-in rivalry with the Habs because of the whole Carey Price saga. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the bluff and Jake Allen and, and, and all that. Um, but now, when they play each other twice a year, it's, it's going to be appointment viewing. Yeah. Slavkovsky versus Shane Wright. Listen, uh, Matthews versus Line A. It, what, the it was the reason good for a bit. Well, the reason it was exhausting is because it was stressful. And the reason it was stressful is because there was a lot at stake. And listen, round one between Matthews and Line, Line kicked his ass. Yeah. He got a hat trick in the OT winner in a game where the Jets erased a four nothing lead. They kicked he kicked his ass, right? And so the next game against the Jets held that much more value. Right. So the first game between Seattle and Montreal. Gee, I don't even know if it matters who wins. Like, I think it matters who gets more points. Yeah, between yeah. Slavkovsky and Shane Wright. It was all. It, sorry, go ahead. It's Jess. good for Seattle because maybe they can finally become relevant this way. Yeah, like honestly. they've been such. Yes. A, they've been. Yes. It is such an NHL hole where nothing is kind of going on with them in terms of storylines because they've just been middling bad. And then now we finally have something, and we could talk about Seattle because they have uh, Shane Wright. And like, I think, I think Montreal made the right pick. You know, in the end, like yeah. we don't, we can never really know until a couple of years from now when all the projections are out. But like, according to the fans, I, I don't fault Montreal for not going with the right. No, the the fans know they they made the right pick. Fans um, know because they man, I got to tell you. So I was I'm, the the one reservation I had is I was like, okay, we're in Montreal. They have the first pick, and the Habs are probably not going to pick the guy who most fans think they're going to pick. So how are they going to react to that? Because if you have the first overall pick in your city, you want the reaction to be nothing but tumult. Mm-hmm. It's got to be tumultuous. And there was maybe a split second, and but they were all like, ah! like <laughs> they, they lost it. Tell everybody about what you saw on the draft floor. Somebody threw, and you showed me the picture. Uh, y- yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, I obtained a photo. Some dick. Um, Did they buy a jersey? They got a freshly made Shane Wright Dummy. 51 Habs jersey. Dummy. And they, because the Habs didn't get them, they threw it. <laughs> so I don't know where they threw it. I don't think it was thrown onto the trap floor. Again, <laughs> we can, here, we got to do a little bit of cropping, but we can show it. We, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we, we can show it. Um, that's hilarious. Airdrop I mean, laptop. I don't know. Sorry, you're a dumbass. What airdrop to the laptop? Oh, oh, like right now? Yeah. Okay. I, I, you know, it's funny that I heard the crowd was like right into it last night, like super fun. You couldn't hear it as much on TV, um, but you know, you could hear the reactions when uh, Bettman stepped up right before the fourth pick, right before Wright gets drafted and goes, "We have a trade." And I thought that was kind of neat because you're, everybody was thinking, like, are they going to get Shane Wright too? And that would have been the ultimate story. That is what I thought. 
I thought that was going to happen, and oh my god, you're hosting the draft, and you're going to get <laughs> both of those the guys. guys. <laughs> who were supposed to supposed to go top two. Is there a way they? Is there a trade where they could have? I think, manage that. I think if you're doing that, Seattle's going okay. Then give us Nick Suzuki. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like what? What are the Habs going to offer? It's, it's certainly not going to be Romanoff, who went ended up being traded. So Montreal then got Romanoff, uh, dealt Romanoff, got Kirby Doc. We'll get into that, but Jesse, are you showing the photo right now? Yeah, yeah, the right jersey that Steve, uh, somebody told you or took a picture of. Someone, was, what someone, happened? someone threw it. I don't know where they threw it. Like, I don't know if they just threw it from where they were sitting or if they threw it onto the draft floor. But they had a fifty-one Shane Wright Habs jersey, and they uh, <laughs> they left it behind on account of it's now you a got, collector's item. You have to keep that. You do well because, like, like, I'm watching the red carpet yesterday and like Shane Wright's walking down the red carpet and he's signing Habs hats Habs hat Habs hat Sens hat I think mm-hmm. I, I think he signed like a Ducks hat and I'm just like okay but what if he doesn't sign with them yeah like, what, what if he doesn't play with any of those teams mm-hmm. I still and think it that doesn't look like he's going to collector's item yeah yeah it's kind of cool. I have a buddy who along those lines I have a buddy who saw Connor McDavid at a gym in Mississauga and he's a huge hockey fan and my buddy and he, the only piece of hockey memorabilia he had at the time on him was a Calgary Flames t-shirt. <laughs> oh, no, it's either a t-shirt, I think it's a t-shirt jersey. So one of those. Jersey. So, sir, a jersey. So he had McDavid sign the Flames jersey. And he signed it. And he signed it. Wow. Good so for out him. there is a McDavid signed Calgary Flames jersey. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So Shane Wright, the Shane, there's a whole bunch of Habs merchandise that Shane Wright has signed and it's out there. Wow. <laughs> he did not sign a Seattle Kraken hat. I, I asked him that specific question. Oh, wow. Yes, he, uh, there wasn't one there, but uh, I told him, well, you're going to sign a bunch now. How was he in your interview? Great. Jovial. And it was, it was funny. Like, so we had never met, and Colby kept going to every guest, and it was annoying. He's like, <laughs> hey, you know who this is? And I'm like, Colby, they don't. Like, I don't think they do, man. Like, I don't know, and I would never assume. Who are you, my dad? My dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like did you tell him to stop? <laughs> yes, but he's Colby Armstrong, and like he probably would like want to do that more, wouldn't he? <laughs> I, I have another story with him. Um, That's fucking funny. But, oh yeah, but Shane Wright. So again, like really positive attitude. He knew he was going to get the chip on his shoulder uh, questions, and it's actually it's kind of a lot of pressure um, asking those questions uh, because. You don't want to be the asshole who asked the wrong question to a kid on their special day. You know what I mean? These are an 18, a 17, 17 year and 18 old. year olds, right? So you want to you want to be compelling and you know you don't just want to be like, "Oh, so where are you going after this?" But it's it's a it's safer than like I'm I'm looking at him I'm like, "Okay, if if I'm going to fuck up with any prospect, I'm going to fuck up with him. So how do I ask compelling questions and also not ruin his night? Um, but he was really happy. Didn't seem bothered by the fact that he, he went forth at all. And then uh, after establishing essentially that he didn't know who I was, um, he walked by again later, like walked right by the set. And there's a moment during the stream, I don't know how I'd be able to find it. It's like a needle in a haystack, but he just went, hey, like he just like pointed at me, like really happy, like we've been buddies forever. And I was like, yeah, Shane, right? Definitely. We're best friends now. <laughs> Give me some of your signing bonus. Like, no, it was, yeah. He, was, he just seemed like really, really upbeat, positive. He probably looked at your uh, Puck Bunny head uh, hoodie. Psycho Bunny. Your, your Puck Bunny hoodie and was it's like, oh, I remember that guy. I certainly stood out. <laughs> I sure, you sure did. It out. You sure <laughs> did. All right, let's get in this Romanov uh, Kirby Doc deal. So Romanov was playing twenty minutes a night for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, he's a top four option. Now, I know Kate and Gooley, ha- they're, you know, they're obviously making room for him, but it seems like an odd choice for a growing organization to let a young defenseman. Yes, he's an RFA, but I don't believe he's even eligible to negotiate with other teams at this point. Like it's a bizarre. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's. Like, you know, you had him on a, uh, you, you know, this, the cards are in your favor on, on re-signing him. Uh, why Kirby Doc and why Alex Romanoff? Well, uh, they didn't get Shane Wright, who's a center, and mm-hmm. they went and got Slavkovsky, who's a winger. So they wanted a young center. Well, now they got a center. And this guy, there's two players who I sort of put in the same boat, uh, Kirby Doc and Capo Caco. 
in that they're both at the beginning of their careers and written off. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Like Joe Thornton had a didn't have a great start. Like Kale McCarr sent Kirby Doc to the Shadow Realm um, with uh, a move that was on every highlight reel and made Kirby Doc look terrible. It's Kale McCarr. He made everyone look terrible. He won the Conn Smythe. He won the Norris. And this is a young guy at the beginning of his career who uh, was basically cast out to sea without a lifeboat and friggin' uh, like on a terrible team. You know, and I know you're like, well, he's going to the Habs. They're also not very good. I don't know if you were They're better attention. than the Blackhawks. They right. finished last. And they're trying to win. They're, uh, I mean, they're going in a better direction than the Blackhawks. Certainly, certainly. we'll get to that. And, uh, you know, he won't be tasked with doing as much. And, and this is also a player they obviously want. And I'm, I'm always fascinated by teams who have a new GM. Because as Bill Guerin showed... With the Parise and Suter buyouts, um, and as many GMs have shown before, they don't have any loyalty to the guys who aren't theirs. Mm -hmm. And Romanov wasn't Ken Hughes's guy. Um, that was a Bergevin guy. They sort of lucked into that pick, and I'm going to go all trade tree on you guys. Um, the Kirby Doc is now officially part of the Rafael Diaz trade tree. Really? Who is Rafael Diaz? He is, is he not a catcher for uh, the Marlins? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like he might be. <laughs> he's he's a he's a Swiss defender um, who I forget what the exact deal was, but it was a really like it, it was a tiny deal with the Habs and Canucks, and it turned into I think it was I think what made the deal big is it eventually turned into the Habs sending Thomas Fleischman and Dale Weiss to the Chicago Blackhawks. And in return, they got a second round pick that ended up being Alexander Romanov and some first round pick. He was a late first rounder. He was small. Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing very well for the Blackhawks. And so, you know what? Let's just get rid of him while he's young. It's Philip Deneau. Oh, wow. So it was Philip Deneau and Alexander Romanov who they then turned into Kirby doc. So they obviously really want this guy. Um, he's, he's going to be a player. It's just, uh, when you go top five and you're anything less than Superman, everyone's really willing to throw you in the garbage. Yeah. One of the problems with Philly doc, uh, Philly doc, <laughs> Kirby doc, that's <laughs> no problem of, uh, there's no fault of his own is that he was 19 or he was, uh, drafted in 19. He's 18 years old. And he was right into the NHL, and he played 64 games in his first year, and nine playoff games. Yeah, that was his first year, and he's he's been around too long. But he's 21, and everybody forgets that he's been in our lives for for uh, three years, including <laughs> two pandemic seasons. Yeah, uh, one of them he barely played. Such a factor, man. So there's fatigue with this kid, but he's 21, and people aren't taking that into account. And it's weird that Chicago just gives up on him. The timeline can match whatever timeline on you're on because he has 14 more NHL but, seasons. But, you know, he's not Kyle Davidson's guy. Ugh. I'm a rookie. I had three goals and four assists for seven points in 55 games. I'm a center. Who am I? I had seven points in my rookie season as a forward. Who was it? Thornton? Joe Thornton. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean. Uh, oh, and then it, the next he's got year. Time. <laughs> the next year there was a pandemic. And then next year after that, there was a pandemic and your team was awful. Did well, that I, happen? <laughs> I, I think like I, I think there's going to be a trend Like by the time we get to the end of this uh, week um, with rounds two through seven coming later today, get this episode up first, um, is uh, I think a lot of OHL players are going to drop um, because, um, uh, because they missed a full season. They didn't play a single game. Mm -hmm. WHL at least tried. QMJHL at least tried. Um, a lot of the U S players got to play, uh, the Europeans got to play, but OHL guys didn't get to go. Um, uh, we, we forget like what a unique draft class this is next year. It should return to normal because you're going to get guys who, you know, you played this past season and you played next season. There's two full seasons worth of stuff to look at, which is normal. We didn't even have like the world juniors hype kids. 
like the kids who are stars on TSN for two weeks. Yeah. You know, we didn't, yeah. we didn't even get that. Yeah, we're getting that in August when none of these players will be at the World so Juniors. So you mean we're not getting That's it. That's right. <laughs> because none of these players will be at the World Juniors in August because they'll be getting ready for NHL camp. There is definitely an air of, uh, hey, so uh, summer vacation's coming up and anyone who's covered the World Juniors is like, eh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> They're just not going to get any time this year. Yeah. Uh, and like, and I know it's... Your... Are we doing another World Juniors in just December then too? Yeah. That's they got to get back on the time. So there's going to be most oh of the teams God. that are the world juniors in August are going to be most of the players that you see in December, too. Because, again, like we said, a lot of these kids, they're, they're not going to the juniors. They're going to the NHL camp. And it's tough because, like, oh, just get rid of it. No. You can't do that either because there's too much at stake. There's money at stake. Too much at stake, money at stake, but also, like, the experience. You know, these yeah. all these players who went and tried and did play like they were robbed of the world junior experience they so, were um tough. you've heard us talk about better help and it's just an important reminder that you have to take care of yourself the way you take care of your car with regular oil changes or the way you take care of your body with regular checkups at the doctor or i don't know working out which steve you've turned your whole garage into a, a, a workout center for steve yeah look at me <laughs> but what if I want a workout laughing? center for my mind? Adam? This is why better helps easy, okay? In all honesty, it's it's online therapy, video, phone, or even live chat therapy sessions, whatever you're comfortable with. You don't have to be seen on camera if you don't want to be, and it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can match with a therapist in under 48 hours. And as a listener of this show, you get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash SDP. Again, that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash SDP. Get more ways to play on every sport. Baseball, golf, and Canadian football are still in full swing because it's the summertime, baby. Mm. So get involved. The action always starts at Sports Interaction. It's Canada's Sportsbook. Bet on the game before it starts, live and play, or use one of the many prop bets that we always talk about on the show. Doing it right since 97, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, easy to play, and cash out. Join now and see that all that sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you in a hypothetical situation, okay? You're sitting on a deck. Mm. The sun is going down. Mm. It's over 25 degrees. Oh. It's a summer night and you don't have to work tomorrow. What goes best with that scenario? Uh, I'll just go with something general, like a little vague. Sorry if this is vague, but Muskoka breweries tread lightly. I think so too. <laughs> Venture to a place where light beer makes no flavor sacrifice. That's what it says. I had one yesterday. Did you? Mm, I did. Did you find that the flavor was sacrificed? No. No. And it is a light beer. And it's only 110 calories per can, which is pretty great. And like all of their beer, Tread Lightly is proudly crafted in Muskoka with all natural ingredients. You can find it at the beer store, you can find it at the LCBO, and you can find it at your local grocery store. Check out muskokabrewery.com and click on Tread Lightly. Let's because we know your time is limited here, Steve, because I know you got to get back to yeah, for on? draft day two. I don't even what are you doing today? That's stuff. OK, um, the Leafs trade Peter Morazic. So they basically trade down the 25th pick uh, turns into the 38th pick. Um, you did call it. Hang on. Uh, and uh, that's the most important part. Get to it. And obviously, Peter Morazic <laughs> to Buff sorry, Buffalo, Chicago. Uh, no salary retained two more years at three point eight million dollars. And the Leafs do not have that on their cap anymore. So what did you want to say? Why do you take your victory lap? Well, I did. I not say that's exactly what they would do. You did. I, I did owe you that. both Montreal smoked meat sandwiches. That's right. We made the bet. That's we? right. Yeah. No, Steve doesn't remember, so I Steve, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> I owe you a sandwich. <laughs> you do. Steve's memory gonna... is like a fish. So <laughs> sometimes it's good and sometimes listen, you gotta give something to get some. Uh Earl Schwartz. <laughs> That's our old phrase. Oh, Earl Schwartz of Leafs Nation. I was gonna pull up this tweet as oh, well. I love this. They're, they're, Earl Schwartz you want me of Schwartz's Deli, you where you're it. getting your Montreal smoked meat sandwich. You read it. Go ahead and read it. So uh the Leafs go from pick twenty five to pick 38 in order to move Mrazic. Earl Schwartz tweets, based on the pick value model I've been using for the last few years, the difference in value between pick 25 and pick 38 is equivalent to a late seventh. So the Leafs paid roughly a seventh to offload Mrazic's 3.8 million cap hit with two years remaining. So, a so, lot of people are hung up on the first round versus second round thing. And they're not all created equal. Like th this is this is what I get hung up on when um when I do the trade trees is I make sure to emphasize where the picks were. 
Well, because, okay, so they've, there have been studies done on this. And on aggregate, the difference between pick 20 and pick 40 is not a whole lot. No. And, and especially, like, this draft feels ridiculously even. Yeah. And, uh, like, you know, there's, there's guys who, <laughs> in all the scouting reports that I read, I'm like, boy, you guys aren't certain about anything, are you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Skates uh, real good, big body, likes to shoot. Now, and yeah. <laughs> that's all of them. It's, yeah. So, okay, why not just wait for the next guy who does all those things? And, uh, like, it really, you do get the impression that this year is Magic Beats. Um, and the, you figured out why the Leafs were able to do this trade. Because of the, so Dubas said that we made this trade because the guy we wanted was already taken. And you figured out who the guy that they took. Yeah, I want to give proper credit. Uh, I don't remember who tweeted it, but uh, they basically said, um, so Dubas, after pick 19, which was Leon Bichelle, who's a monster um, to the Minnesota Wild. Liam Ogren. Liam, Liam so Bichelle was the one you were thinking about. Liam Ogren is the one who went to the wild. Yeah. The, the big guy is uh, Bichelle. He didn't go to the wild. He went, oh. uh, he went before Liam Ogren. So, okay, so this is another thing. Since the stream ended, I have had zero chance to go back through what happened. It's okay. So who's, who's Liam Ogren? I so, think I spoke to him too. Yeah, he's, he's the other... Uh, he's Swedish, um, left-handed shot. Defenseman? Left wing. Winger. Left wing. Yeah. yeah well, big 6'1". Oh my god. 200 pounds. It's a three and a half hour stream. Yeah. So the Leafs wanted him. Yes. The Leafs, Out of the SHL. Yeah. Supposedly they, they wanted him. Um, tra- chatter at the Leafs table picked up once he was gone. And so I think Dubas was sitting there and I think he was happy to pick him at 25. He wasn't available at 25. So, all right, let's make a deal with the Blackhawks. Now, I want to compare and contrast here. The Oilers traded Zach Cassian to the Coyotes, 3.2 million. So Cassian makes less. He's got two years left as well, like Peter Morazic. Great comparison. Um, Oilers trade Zach Cassian to the Coyotes. It involves a pick swap, moving down three spots, 29 to 32, plus a second and a third. And um, uh, what's interesting about this is that the Edmonton Oilers paid more. By the way, the pick is a 2025 second round and a 2024 third round. Hilarious. That's it, which is hilarious. Because honest, honestly, it doesn't hurt them now. It's like, it's no big deal. I think, but what's interesting is that objectively, um, the Oilers paid a higher price to get rid of less money than the Leafs did. Mm-hmm. And I thought Thomas Drance had a really good take on it. He said, it would be easy to compare the prices paid by Dubas in hauling in dumping cap, cap space tonight and construe it as a shot at Holland. Fact is, Holland paid usual market price. Chicago, however, under new na- management, got absolutely rinsed. Interesting. I, again, I, I keep getting more and more fascinated by the Arizona Coyotes and what the hell they're going to be next season and who the hell's going to play for them. And I realized something when, when they got Zach Cassian is, uh, well, they're probably going to be bad, mm-hmm. but they're going to try. Yeah, I still think they're going to overachieve, and they're going to overachieve by beating the shit out of. They're going to be Vitas uh, Vitas Cheha, Vitas Cheha, which yeah. was owned by a bunch of uh, Russian mobsters. We think uh, allegedly, allegedly mobsters. Please don't hurt me. Allegedly, um, and and they basically signed a bunch of fighters and just beat the crap out of everybody they played. Yeah, the difference is they weren't good, right? But they did beat the shit out of everybody, right? Okay. Um, and now they got like Nick Ritchie and Zach Cassian could both be on the same line. They could both be on the top line together. That's not fun to play against. No, it's. I mean, you can. You'll, you'll skate around them, but uh, uh, you'll a, win. But at what cost? It, right, right, and and uh, and I just I thought that the comparison between the two trades, they're essentially the same thing, was very very interesting. And I don't know if I don't know. Drance is pretty connected, mm-hmm. so I don't think he would have said that without knowing something. I wondered what your thoughts were on that. Do you feel like Chicago got rinsed? I mean, uh, well, they need somebody to play goalie there. Well, based on what we've this this is the thing, right? So this is this is what we've uh, talked about. Um, like, listen, Mrazek, he's still a National Hockey League goalie, man. Like, he's he an eight eighty eight National Hockey League goalie. He was listen. There was a he's time, a Martin Jones. There there was a, a, a about a month this season where he was unusable. He was unusable. He wasn't an option at all. But. Like we talked about, he played 12 games the season before, played one game with the Leafs, got hurt, came back, played another game, got hurt, took some time off, came back, 
seasons paused. He never had a shot at being a Toronto Maple Leaf. You know what I mean? He never had a shot. Um, and I think, I think there are market pressures, you know what I mean? So he, he's going to be facing the same issues in Chicago that he's going to be, uh, was going to be faced with here. But the difference is the fans here are like, okay, I think we've seen enough of Peter Morazic. Well, and the expectation I think in Chicago is they're going to lose anyway. So if he, if he's yeah. successful, great. If he's not great. Yeah. Like I think, I think one thing we came away with, uh, with Chicago's performance yesterday is they have no interest in being competitive next year at all. And so, so they, they drop Kirby doc and they drop Alex to I mean, senators fans, I hate the trade, which means you won. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so Mark Lazarus and you know, Ma- Mark Lazarus and Scott powers are, you know, long considered two of the best Chicago yeah. uh, Blackhawks writers. And Lazarus said outright in his column this morning on The Athletic, it was a mistake. I rarely hear Mark Lazarus talk like that. And it's not because he's like a homer or whatever. He's very measured in, and that's what makes him so good. He but pick, for him to go his spots. outright, this is a mistake. And it does kind of not, it's, you sort of look at it and you go think, man, he's like, this kid's 24. He scored, he scored 40 goals twice already. It's so hard to find 40 goal scores. And I know he's playing with Kane. And I know that li- that total likely doesn't happen this year against you know with Ottawa unless him and Shabbat really start to link up. But it 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 gives Ottawa the goal scoring they absolutely need. We talked about this a couple episodes ago. They need a finisher. They got one. Yep. And yeah, you know he might walk to free agency here in a few years. But in the meantime, you get to you get to try to convince him to stay in Ottawa long term because they're they think they're going to win. But Chicago, Doc. And Debrin Cat, both under the age of twenty five. Could they not be a part of the competitive window? I I I really I don't get the thought process. And especially Doc, who has struggled and you know, probably didn't have as much value as he'll have next year if he improves. Mm-hmm. I mean, the other option is he goes the wrong way, and this is the most value you were ever gonna get from him. But um with with Chicago, here's here's the question I would have. How many points did Connor McDavid ever put up with the Buffalo Sabres? Zero points. Zero points. Connor Bedard is extremely good. Teams are, I think the tank for him is going to be shocking next year. So Buffalo, Chicago. Yeah, man. Well, I think Buffalo is trying to compete, but Chicago is, they are, I, I got to say they're the clubhouse front runner. Uh, Coyotes for, will make a tr- charge at that, I think. I, no, no. I, th- I think it's a race so. to the bottom. It's, uh, yeah. Chicago lost a lot yesterday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Coyotes will be decent. Oh, yeah. decent. Sorry, sorry. I thought yeah, because Adam Chicago. threw the Coyotes in the race for the bottom. I don't think they're going to be a race for the bottom. I think like the, the Morassic deal kind of makes sense for me for Chicago because they need a starting goaltender. Who sucks? And, and they're, <laughs> the, last, the last time he played a full season, he was a 9-14, uh, I think, save percentage. But with the, with Carolina. the Carolina, with the Carolina oh, defense, season, yeah. the Carolina system, guys. Sure, but they're not trying to win. Like, that's not what Chicago's trying to do. They needed just a guy who can play 50 NHL games, and they'll they received to, that. They'll be able to trade him at the deadline. Yeah. They will, or, you know, maybe they get rid of one of their other guys. Maybe they hold on to D'Elia and Lankin in uh, because, who knows, Mrazek's groin could explode at any mm-hmm, moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that team is going to go really hard after Connor Bedard, yep. and you have a one-in-five shot if you finish last. It's, it's supposed to be a strong draft, so we'll see what they do. Like maybe they'll be happy finishing anywhere. But they want top. Bedard. Yeah. Well, so who did Buffalo get instead of McDavid? Eichel. Next year, it's uh, McDavid and Mitchkov. Uh, McDavid and Mitchkov. Bedard and Mitchkov. I'm tired. Bedard and Mitchkov. Um, but again, because the draft lottery isn't the way it was in 2015, you could finish last and still whiff on both those guys. You could still pick fourth. Is it worth? Is it worth it to do all this just to pick fourth? Who's supposed to go fourth next year? Is this really worth it? I mean, I think with a top five pick next year, Chicago would be lucky to get a player as talented as Alex DeBrincat. DeBrincat's a star. He's one of the best goal scorers in the NHL. Seventy something points last year. They must have been really convinced that they weren't going to be able to get that done because. Apparently, his qualifying offer when his contract's up is $9 million or something like that. It's a big number. He's worth but he's, it. Yeah, he is worth it. 40-goal score should be worth $9 million. Yeah. Plus, 
You have twenty million dollars, twenty one million dollars coming off the books with Taves and Kane. Yeah, man, we've heard some wild shit with them. Yeah. I do you have I, the Lazarus quotes? I still think there's a chance. Uh, yeah, both I'll those guys are dealt before we leave Montreal. Yeah, okay. Kyle Davidson spoke on both of them after the draft. He was asked directly about what's going to happen with that. You know who didn't really do anything yesterday? Philadelphia. Okay, so Kyle They've Davidson. In every rumor. Kyle Davidson's full comments uh, on our Kane our Kane and Tay's next. I haven't heard. Anything. Well, I think again, it's a discussion that we're going to have to have. Uh, we're honest and we told them what could happen and we're going to have to uh, potentially make some changes. So it wasn't any de uh, deception in that, but it's real now. There's a discussion that's going to have to happen. They're aware of what we expected them and why we want them around. And then Lazarus followed that up with, do you want them <laughs> around? Do you want them to be a part of this? Yeah, I think there's value in having guys like that that can help mold and set the bar and set the example for younger players coming in. But, but that's a two-way street and they have to want to be a part of that. Uh, Dude, but you know what? <laughs> to this point, we haven't heard otherwise. Again, we're going to have to be very open with them, very transparent. Today was a day that I'm not sure any people saw coming necessarily. Maybe they did, but it's hard to accept nonetheless, which I get. It's a necessary step that we have to take to get this on track and be where we want to be and not try to make small tweaks along the way. We had to make a big shift. We had to change things. Now, uh, uh, Pat Brisson was asked about, because he is Pat Kane's agent, I believe, and he was asked about this, and he said, we have no comment at this time. <laughs> always, um, always good for a no comment. No comment at this time. Um, we will have some discussions in the coming weeks. I have a question for the class. Why was Kyle Davidson's decisions to make big changes for the team, big shifts, he said, mm -hmm. why is that moving out the young, talented guys and not the older, overpaid guys? Why are you not moving Kane, Taves, Johnson, Seth Jones instead of moving Doc and Debrinket? Well, because a boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat. Yeah. Uh, famous family guy quote, Jesse Blake. I... I don't get it. Neither, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Like most teams, I'm like, I understand why you're doing this. I don't get it. I mean, they, who knows? They could finish real shitty next year and still, you know, get something for Taves, I'm sure. Get something for Kane, I'm sure. M you know, maybe a few other spare parts. Like you're looking at like potentially like uh, uh, just as long a rebuild as Arizona. Mm -hmm. especially at a time of this year when everybody has the space to take on these contracts yeah like we're we're pre-free agency but i think you're gonna have time at the trade deadline as well and yeah. i think that's you know you retain five and next week huh next week i think is gonna be stupid well next week is gonna mm -hmm. could be yeah but i think i think if they don't get them off uh get them out by by you know next week or whatever and everybody's caps filled up i think by the deadline both of those guys are going because yeah if they're not willing to to wave now i'm sure they are but if they were not if they were not willing to waive now, I'd be like, okay, come enjoy a lovely half season in Chicago, mm -hmm. one of the windiest cities on the planet. Sure. When you're not winning, uh, Taves, uh, are you? Like, no way are they going to like that. Every They'll interview move. I've seen with Taves, he seems miserable. Yeah, yeah. You see, and like, listen, losing sucks. Uh, I get it, but like, some people handle it better, and he's not handling it better at all. I also think that the two of them sort of thought that they would be part of the brain trust with Bowman. They weren't happy with Bowman. And then they're not happy with Davidson. And I don't know. And I got to I got to ask you, I know that they won three cups there, but they didn't build those teams. And I don't know why they either of them seem to think that they were going to be a part of the brain trust in rebuilding. This. They got zero cups since their deals. Like they've never won with those $10 million no, contracts. They there still hasn't been a uh, double digit player to win the cup. And yeah. the sod trade. The sod trade. <laughs> Shut was up. I know. The Sod Shut trade up. was apparently at their behest. They wanted Brandon Sod back. There you go. Right? They're uh I don't I don't get this team. I don't get this team. I get Kyle Davidson a little bit. I still think it's a mistake to drop Alex to Brincat. Kirby Doc, I can see you moving. I can see that. I, I, get, I, it. I, I, I get it. Twenty one. But but I, yeah, I know, twenty one. I know. Ugh. But I'm like if we're if we're talking like, okay, if you're just starting right now and you think your competitive window is going to open as soon as the cap jumps in 2025, that's what I think Chicago's thinking. Mm. That's when they're going to make their big free agency splashes, right? Matthews, I think, is up that year. Or is he 24? It doesn't really matter. Two, two years from Yeah, it's You're, you're, you're going to try to swing for the fences in 24 and 20, definitely 25. So, okay, fine. You're not going to be good for a few years. Even then, DeBrincat is just 27 at that point. 
right? You know, you're going into your prime. Yep. That's your pr- and and then and then you have a bunch of young guys coming up with a guy like Alex DeBrincat. I don't you, know, man. You imagine Matthews on one line and DeBrincat on the other. Could have happened. <laughs> Could have happened. At least wanted Travis Dermott instead. And so you brought up Stan. <laughs> wow. You brought, you, you brought <laughs> I didn't up think that's what you were going with. Could happen. That's, that's uh, <laughs> my heart hurts. Um, uh, you brought up you brought up Stan Bowman. So let's let's for the sake of argument, uh, not even take into account how poorly he handled everything from 2010, right? Mm-hmm. We've heard many a time this guy's going to get back into the league. Why? I don't know. They I don't know are setting this team that, that so again he didn't build. The 2010 winner that turned into the 2013 winner. No, that, that was Talon. 2015 winner. Talon built the. It was Talon who built the 2010 winner, which provided the foundation for Stan Bowman. Yes. Who, to his credit, tinkered adequately and won cups with that tinkering. Okay. Mm-hmm. But even still, like 2015, they're like, fuck, we have three defensemen. Well, luckily, the guys who I was given by the last guy are good enough to win it. Anyway, they played 25 yeah. minutes each every night. Duncan Keith was a madman. Yeah. And like a goalie he didn't draft and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Bowman did very little. It, uh, he didn't have to do much. Tinker around the edges. You had a core. Yeah. I mean, did five guys. You can he, only do the job that you have in front of you. And mm-hmm. he, he did well with that job. Like they, they did win the Cubs. The team he built, <laughs> the Blackhawks organization is lighting on fucking fire right now. And Debrin Cat's gone. And Doc is gone. And it's interesting because the new guy isn't actually the new guy. The new guy it was there the whole time or for part of the time. He was with the organization. And the most damning thing with the Chicago Blackhawks is Seth Jones' contract extension. He hasn't even played a game under it. He's the only guy left. Yeah. It's Kane, Taves, and Jones. They still have three huge money players at the age and of they're 22 gonna be bad. at the age of 22 Kyle, Kyle Davidson was named special assistant to the general manager 22 22 wow interesting and he's been with the Blackhawks ever since 32 10 years into the job he was named assistant general manager cap friendly is just so goddamn good like yeah the fact that they know that and also that they put the age Adam how old is Kyle Davidson I mean, he looks like the youngest person in the world. <laughs> um, he's a baby. Well, I mean, he's got to be 35, 36. Uh, what's your guess? 36. I'm going to say that also. 36 and one day. 34. He is. Th- so he's our age. He's our age. He's 1988, baby. Wow. What month? July. He just turned 34 on uh, July 1st. He's younger than both of us. I just want to run this. Cap for- Friendly is unbelievable. How do I just have that information? They're on stupid good. It's unreal. They're unreal. I want to run this forward group by you for Chicago next oh. season. <laughs> Kane, Taze, Tyler Johnson. That group costs you $26 million. <clears throat> you still have to sign Dylan Strom, but you also have... Um, Bob McKenzie reported that he thinks they're going to let the, uh, Dylan Strom walk. <laughs> He's an RFA. They're not going to give him a qualifying offer. He'll become a UFA and he'll walk. Whoa. I wonder if the Leafs, if that's like a Nick Ritchie type pickup for the Leafs. That's what everyone else seems to think. Uh, Dominic Kubalik, you have to resign. Oilers make sense too. Um, But you've got then Brett Connolly, Sam Lafferty, Henrik Borgstrom, Lucas Reichel, Mackenzie Entwistle. A lot of guys on $800,000 to $900,000 contracts. And then you've got Seth Jones, Jake McCabe, and Riley Stillman as your top three defensemen. Oh. And that Seth Jones contract, by the way, goes till 29.30. Fuck a duck. I don't know how they're going to get rid of that. How, when are we going to start talking about that being one of the worst trades of this century? The Seth Jones trade? Yes. So they essentially, with that deal, rebuilt Columbus's entire fucking blue line. How, well, can you run me through that again? Because I completely forgot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, I'll, can, uh, I'll just Well, Jesse's picking forward. that up. So no, Adam, I have it right here. Oh, you got it? Okay. Adam, oh, here, do you want to read it? Yes. So Seth Jones went to the Blackhawks along with a first round pick and a sixth round pick in exchange for Adam 
Boyquist. Boquist. Boquist. Yeah. Or Boquist. Boquist. Yeah. I don't know good. why I corrected you. I didn't very know the player. answer. <laughs> very good player. Uh, two firsts <laughs> and a second. Ooh. But who are the first? The two first. Uh, this year it was David Yurichek and uh, the twelfth overall Cole Sillinger. Oh. And uh, Alex Hemin Sala. Salami. Uh, Heimo Salami, I think. Second round. Uh, pick I had from to read last this year. last night. Right there. So, like, Bockwist, uh, Juracek could be like, I don't know, a pair one day. And then, uh, Columbus got another defender yesterday in the first round as well. And I, th- I want to say Juracek is the righty. The other guy they got is the lefty. And like, I don't know, they could, they could be D partners. Oh, day. like Chicago has rebuilt Columbus's entire back end. That's crazy. That is mm-hmm. it's crazy. And a Cole Sillinger might be pretty the, good as well. And the trade is so crazy because it came with the contract. You know, like they they traded for him and then they had the extension ready, and the extension goes till forever, and it's nine point five million dollars. Oh my goodness! And th- and that was <laughs> that was like the last thing he ever did for the team, <laughs> and it is the rock of triumph. It is just. Wow. It starts this it's, year. It's the only thing on the Blackhawks that looks impossible. You know, he wasn't as bad last year as people said. He the, had a the few, Blackhawks were as bad, I think. The Blackhawks were as bad. Um, he had a few real bad lowlights, but it's difficult. It's difficult to look good on a shitty team. That's yeah. very true. You know what I mean? So would someone go for Seth Jones? I think they would. I do. Um, but Salary retention is not an option, so I don't know what you do. Do you remember when Seth Jones was a predator? Oh yeah, that's who drafted him. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot too. That was <laughs> weird. He was traded straight up for Ryan Johansson. I forgot about that trade. Oh yeah. Uh, then they went on their run. Yeah, potential trade tree. Uh, the problem is nothing. Hey. <laughs> nothing really happened with that trade tree until last year. Uh, yeah, with with the Bachwitz and now trade. now your check said it. That's kind of funny. Yep. It's like a dead trade tree until it 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 comes back from the ashes. Yeah, so that's this, cool. those, that's a fun one. Yeah, I well, this is the thing. Like, I think a bunch of the trade trees that we've already done, we're gonna instead of doing new ones, we're gonna update because, like, the, the Matt Duchesne trade. Oh yeah, the, it the, the implications are huge. Well, the implications are it built a Stanley Cup winner. You know, so that's a huge one. So we Matt did, Duchesne did, in fact, bring the Stanley Cup to, to Colorado the way he wanted to. Yeah, and Colorado beat him on the way there. Oh. Uh, it's okay. It's only his childhood team. It's devastating. Oh. Every every time I think about the Matt Duchesne trade, I'm just like, oh, man, he grew up cheering for them, too. That fucking sucks. But um, I, I don't remember where I was going. Oh, we didn't even mention the Alexander Georgiev trade. We're going to. Great. Because <laughs> we were talking more about the draft moves, but now we're going to talk about, obviously, that. Yeah, so that's the next one, obviously. Georgiev it's going to the... <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine. I don't care. It's good. To, it's a good uh, segue. So Georgiev to the abs to back up Fransuz, which means Kemper is hitting the open market. I think he's um, going to start. Uh, you think he's going to be the starter that, rather than Fransuz? Joe Sackick sure seems to think so. Really? Yeah. Well, listen, a lot of people have thought for a long time that, that, that Georgiev is a starter in the NHL, but when you're backing up Shosturkin, you're not going to get a lot of time. I tell you what, I, I'm not a fan of getting Georgiev as your starter. Joe Sackick really ought to be fired. <laughs> All right. Not, you're welcome, Alexander. This means you're going to win the Vesna. <laughs> I'm so happy the NHL awards, or NHL awards, the NHL draft paused for 20 minutes so we could find out that Joe Sackick is GM of the year. Oh, because why did they, they do don't that? have an award ceremony where they announce the awards. Somebody no, t- no, no, no. It had to happen at the draft. Somebody tweeted at me and they're like, well, that's when all the GMs are there. I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> The awards thing happened last week. By the way, the GM of the year award is the Stanley Cup. Sackick already won it. Yeah. But but the reality is is that you have an awards. That's like giving out uh, the Oscar for best supporting uh, at the Marvel movie premiere. Lightning. Like what's happening? Lightning players and Avalanche players had to go to the awards in between the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Kale McCarr won the Norris Trophy. Was at the but awards in but on his Jesse, off day the, for the, playing the, GMs, the Stanley Cup final. The GMs are too important Joe to make Sackett that trip. Can attend the damn ceremony. I do want to point out that two weeks ago, Joe Sackick won the Stanley Cup. Yesterday, won GM of the year on his birthday. <laughs> yesterday was his birthday? Yesterday was his birthday. Oh. Colby Armstrong pointed that out. I was like, how the hell do you know that? It's crazy. Um, yeah, his 53rd uh, uh, birthday. But, y- you know, it, CJ 
uh, on the CJ show, the Chris Johnson show yesterday was fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's one of the best episodes they've ever done, if not the best. And he nailed almost everything as well. Um, but one of the things he talked about is they might be going away from uh, doing in-person drafts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if I'm, okay, if I'm trying to improve yesterday, I get rid of, I get rid of that entire segment. I get rid of that entire fucking segment. Which segment? The Sackick thing? Yes. Of course. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> also, also <laughs> the they second. waste so much time. Like I said to Jesse, it's like, it's like the mid-90s hip-hop when you brought everybody up on stage when you won an why, award. Why did they got 12 guys? What? Yeah, and then two random children. Like, <laughs> I, I, okay, we get it. You like, we, or, it, like <laughs> are you kidding me? Have somebody enter, because here's the thing. You do the NBA draft, David, or, uh, David Stern used to, and now it's Adam Silver, comes out and they go, uh, with the 25th pick, mm. the Atlanta Hawks pick, blah, 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 whatever. You can't have Gary doing that. Because, uh, to be honest with you, it seems like public speaking is a little strenuous for Gary at this point. He's an older man. Mm. He's also boring as shit. Depends who you ask. You need to... He embraces the heel role at the draft. I guess. It's it's, it's, it's still pretty boring. (laughs) It's the only day of the year I like him. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I think you need to have... I think you need to have a smaller venue packed with fans. You do it from... uh, You do it from your, your home city. And you, and then you have the draft picks backstage. So when they win, they come out. So you're in favor of a hybrid model. Yes. Where all the teams in the floor doesn't exist. That's right. Get rid of the teams in the floor. Get the fans in the building. Get them loud. Like those Montreal fans in the upper deck, because the lower deck, the reason it looked all empty, and Jesse pointed this out on on the thing yesterday, is that those are family and friends and they're up and they're moving and they're whatever. Uh, the the upper deck fans were bananas. They were crazy. They were loud. Get those people close to the stage. Let these kids feel like effing rock stars because they are and make it look big and exciting and get it done in a couple hours. Pack. You can get that done in two hours. You can easily get that done in two hours. Once the clock ends on one team and the pick is registered, the clock starts on the next. Let's Cap go. Cap it at three. Cap it at three is all I'm saying. And, that no, was because four hours they, yesterday. They start the... No, no. You could do it in less and you start... No. They start the clock, Steve, and then the pick is registered, and then everybody gets up, scratches their fucking nuts, and then walks up to the stage, (laughs) shakes Gary's hand, he shows them where the microphone is, and there's like 40 of them. Every time. Are you kidding me? And they couldn't put Nashville's pick on the clock during the Sackick speech? By the way, I I give Sackick credit, it was shorter than I thought. And, and but come on don't, don't play w- walk up music just have the other team walk on stage like mid sack speech yeah just get you just you play them off get out of here you already won the cup you greedy bastard <laughs> um uh, first of all i'm hung up <clears throat> on you like with the random children on stage that's so funny I, I, the only exception is the Flyers who like brought up someone from the Ed Snyder Foundation. I Love thought, that. I right. thought that was but, really but cool. No, no but Adam this, hates But them. also <laughs> let's no, Adam just hates clean children. it up. Clean it up. No, I, and every I know you're goddamn about. general manager needs to get up there and they're like, well, I just want to thank the Montreal Canadiens for the hospitality. Fuck you. Who? <laughs> it's pick 22. I want to go to bed. Who had the hard J on the bonjour? Oh, bonjour. <laughs> and that, Xavier Gutierrez from the Coyotes. <laughs> Gary Bettman. Bonjour, Montreal. Gary Bettman's French is the worst French I've ever heard. It's horrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bettman's made no effort to learn French. <laughs> like, it was disrespect. I think most people in the building were like, I. W- I, w- I wish you would have rather just spoke English. Like that, uh, th- holy shit. Holy shit. As someone who got 50s and 60s throughout French in high school, uh, good lord. Have you heard that TikTok sound where it's like, I wish you would have just called me a slur. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> but I didn't want to say that. That's, that's right. Gary Bettman speaking French. I wish you just spoke English. <laughs> I wish. Uh, I have to tell you, I, I drove up I, right across the Quebec border. I, I drove into a McDonald's because I needed a cop. And, oh, uh, shit. And I was like, I was like, oh, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I don't even know how to order coffee anymore in a cafe. Uh, <laughs> mes amis, like, what am I saying? So I, I, uh, so I go up and they're like, yeah, bienvenue to McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. And I said, uh, uh, parlez-vous uh, anglais? And they're like, yes, we speak English. <laughs> and it was like flat, no accent English. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, I'm an idiot. Um, uh, <laughs> fuck me, right? Like, yeah. Sorry, I was just asking to be nice, but... I don't know. You get asked it like 30 times a day. It gets it probably gets fucking annoying. <laughs> um, and also, it's like, you know, it's sort of like, yeah, we have, we're have we a dual lingual, uh, dual, um, lingual country, uh, country. Learn a little bit of it. And I get it. Um, it's, yeah. Sorry, now, you just reminded me of uh, how Bob Barker used to talk to Canadians like they were children. 
Oh, and you're here. <laughs> so we have Kathy, and Kathy, you get to spin the big wheel. Yeah. He yeah. Would, oh, my God. Yeah. I, Bob, I love- we speak the same language, Bob. It's so weird when people say, like, you know, when, when New York, New Yorkers say, I'm, you know, I'm from New York, which is in New York, right? Or uh, Buffalo, New York. Or, you know, I'm, I'm from Los Angeles, which is in California. When Americans refer to Canadians, they're from Toronto, which is in Canada. Yeah. It's not, it's Calgary, Canada, Vancouver, Canada, like, yes. like um, yes. Brian Five or Six, Ottawa, Canada. Ottawa, you know Canada. what I mean? It's, it's never the province because they don't even know those exist. Um, by we, the way, we don't even get it. Needs to get into uh, Chris Broussard on fucking. Oh, ESPN, we should have played yeah, the I, ultimate sin. I wish we could play that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you come into Toronto as an African American, you know. Remember in the '90s when they had Tracy McGrady? Yeah, and they couldn't keep <laughs> can't keep him pre Messiah Toronto, which was 2013. Yeah, listen, I Chris have Broussard. done. I've done book reports on books I didn't read. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so yeah. did he on national television. That's the um, guy who walked up there with no idea for what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Do so, you, do you want to hear my in-depth opinion on Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Wait, shut the Steve, fuck up. Uh, can you tell us about a streetcar named Desire? Yeah. <laughs> At least yeah, you know. Great Simpsons episode. <laughs> At least you know where Kentucky is probably on a map. You could probably find it. I, I don't know that Chris Broussard could find Ontario on a map. No. If I could probably, I don't know if I could point out Kentucky, but I could probably point out a state bordering it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, um, did you know your butt has a favorite app? What is it? It's SeatGeek. That's right. SeatGeek takes your butt places. It's, it takes your butt places to place your butt in fun places where your butt can enjoy itself. Like on the sink? For Maybe a not. No, you don't have to buy anything. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's, no, we're, oh, different we're, places. We're thinking more concerts this summer, you know, with oh, the world opening nah. up and everything. Here's what you need to do. You can get 20 bucks off your first purchase with the promo code SDP at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. Go and see your favorite team, your favorite concert, wherever it is you haven't got to do the last two years. Go do it with SeatGeek. That promo code, again, is SDP for 20 bucks off your first SeatGeek order. SeatGeek. Get your seat in a seat. Download the app today. Who doesn't love cereal? Uh, bad people. Bad people. Yeah. People you don't trust. No. But here's the thing. Um, cereal's great, but it's not necessarily always the best for you. Except with Magic Spoon, it can be. In wow. fact, it is. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. It's low carb. It's keto friendly. It's gluten free. It's grain free. It's soy free. And it's 140 Uh, calories per serving now let me ask you this would you go with cocoa fruity frosted or peanut butter steve jesse fruity frosted doesn't matter you can get them all (laughs) go to magicspoon.com promo code stp it's magicspoon.com slash stp to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try magic cereal for yourself be sure to use that promo code stp to save five bucks off of your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, your next bel- delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal is at magicspoon.com slash SDP. Use the promo code SDP and save five bucks off your first order. And that's a happiness guarantee. Yeah. Athletic Greens, better gut health, more energy, stronger immune system, and a really easy way to get all of the nutrients that you don't normally always get unless, you know, you're getting them in pill form and then you got to pull out the pill box and do all that. You know what I mean? That sounds exhausting. Is there a better way to do it? There is. And that's athletic greens, Steve. And you Um, don't have to be an athlete to take athletic greens. Or green. No, you don't. It's strange. You don't have to be a green person. 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. How about that? I'm always saying, man, I can't, I, I can't with these adaptogens. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens would like to give you one free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash STP. That's athleticgreens.com slash STP to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Own it like a house. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work on your outlines there, pal. So let's talk about, uh, because you, Steve's got limited time here, let's talk about Chris Letang. Yeah. Uh, oh, I got a Chris Letang story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, right. no, 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 but sorry. Uh, set it up, set it so, up. <laughs> so people in the stream last night were like, he's only 32. No, he's 35. And he just signed a six-year contract. And I believe when the contract starts, if I'm not mistaken, 
Uh, yeah, no, no, he'll still be 35. Yeah, so he's a year older than us. And he has um, six years left, which means he'll be about 41 when this deal is done. The, he has a no-move clause. Okay? Throughout it. Throughout. And it's interesting because you would think with a deal like this, for Pittsburgh to be able to move this guy... He should ha- he should lose his no trade protection around forty, and most of the bonuses should be paid out, and his salary should be like seven hundred fifty grand in real money. That's what you think, mm-hmm. but Pittsburgh didn't do that. They don't have that. Like his salary goes up and down, but there are no bonuses in this contract. Really, there are none, and this is a thirty five plus contract. I I think it's designed for him to retire in four years or after four and years. lose out on nine million dollars. Yeah. Not retire. No, LTIR. Uh, he has an injury that's going to pop up in three years. Well, and it, it'll be super believable because he gets hurt every yeah, season. Yeah, because it's going to be an injury. Like, what? I'm sure he already has it. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, you okay, know that's, a, that's the one. You know, the one on the scan? Like, that's th- the one. This isn't rocket. We've seen this happen 80, 100 times in the last four years. Guys are old when they're playing hockey. They have all these injuries. Crystal Tan's contract is a fucking boat, and it's not going to be paid out. The more that happens, the more I'm like, why are the Canucks paying for Roberto Luongo, why? Uh, no, because they oh, wanted so dumb. They wanted to LTIR him, and the NHL went. Well, he's not injured. Edmonton is supposedly on the verge of putting Mike Smith on LTIR. <laughs> what the fuck? I just saw him play in the Western Conference Final. No, no, he's been injured. But he's just playing the Western no, Conference Final. No, he's going on LTIR. No, he's injured. Yeah, he's retired. Um, like I know. Uh, yes, yes. Again, we've been through this many times. NHL players always play with heinous shit. I just saw him play. In Pittsburgh, though, the next three years matter, and having Latang around matters. Yeah. And his type of play, we were talking about on the stream last night, i.e. Marlowe, the skating, the puck moving, all those things lends itself to a guy who could have a really long career. So assuming the injury, it's amazing the Latang turnaround because four or five years ago, we were talking about this guy like he has had a ton of injuries. How is he going to do this? What a Still shame. There. He's amazing. It's amazing what he's done. He was their best defenseman last season. Absolutely. Yeah. But without question. Um, quickly, uh, before we got to go here. Sorry, Latang. Latang story. Real quick. Oh, Latang story. Go. Sorry, sorry, real quick. So Colby Armstrong is the mayor. He's the mayor. It was impossible walking anywhere with him because he knows absolutely everybody. Mm-hmm. He, uh, at one point, I'm taking notes and I just hear Colby go, cough. And I'm like, what? And he's, that's how he addresses Paul Coffey. <laughs> Jeff, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Molson walked up to him. Jeff G, Molson. G, what's up, G? Hey, G Money. Like, just, <laughs> just Jeff Molson, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, he was talking what? to. Like, yeah, he just he just knows everybody. I saw him and I was just like, that's Jerry Bruckheimer. That's what team silly. does he part? Seattle. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, but during our stream, and this is what we had to emphasize to every guest, uh, you're live. We're yep. live right now. Uh, Chris Letang walks up to him and he just with most people, he would like sh- Hey, shake their hand and like they would move on because they were doing something and you, that that was okay. It's just it's part of the ambiance of the stream. Chris Letang walks up to him and he just like gets up and leaves. He just walks off the table and I'm just like, all right, this is the uh, this is the NHL draft cast with Steve Dangle and Colby Armstrong, hydrated by BioSteel here on the Sports Day YouTube channel. And I was just doing it by myself while he's talking to Chris Letang. For like five minutes with his kid. And then Colby, uh, I see him uh, come back in into the shot. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's about to rejoin me. Nope. He grabbed a biosteel off the table and gave it to Crystal Tang's kid and continued the conversation. Wow. <laughs> so he was just talking to Crystal Tang during the uh, stream. And I was, I, I don't remember what I said. I was just treading water. Yeah, you know what it happens. Jesse and I had to both go to the bathroom and stuff during the stream last night. You just tap dance a little bit. Colby and I didn't talk go about the your entire feet. time. <laughs> talk about your feet. I heard, um, what have you done? I found out about, only, so I, I, I put my foot up on, on the couch and people saw it and they're like, oh, nice foot. And then I was like, oh, and then they're like, Adam is going to be on only feet, which apparently is a thing. Uh, and then, or no, no, Footpedia? Footpedia? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't want to know. Poor, f- foot hub? Anyway, long story short, uh, uh, you know, Jesse has the crab people, I have the feed people. I don't I'm think happy. it's going to stick. <laughs> uh, we got to go, we got to go into two quick stories before we go, because Steve does have to get down to the draft floor to do stuff today. Uh, uh, I don't know if you saw this uh, live, but uh, the clip rolling around and we can't show it because it's ESPN property of Maverick Lamoureux's parents kissing with tongue after he gets uh, drafted. And listen, let me tell you, 
If my kid got drafted to the NHL, you bet your ass I'd be making out. Good for them. Fucking get it. Let's go. <laughs> trying to make another one? Yeah, yeah. Always trying to make babies. Well, he was <laughs> he, he was legendary. He uh, Supposedly, his stats were he had four goals, 20 assists, so 420. His penalty Amazing. minutes were 69. No! He's the tallest player in the draft at 6'7", and they go to his parents and they're making out on uh, uh, just that's, na- national television. Get it, baby. Get it. Good for you. Maverick Lamoureux, baby. I uh, I passed him. I, I was telling Jesse this. I passed him, and it's great having Jesse as a friend because now I know permanently and forever what 6'5 looks like. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw him, and producer Drew and producer Nick were like, oh, my God, that guy's got to be like 6'5. I'm like, no, he's 6'7 because <laughs> he's taller than Jesse. That's Maverick Lamoureux. I know that because he's the tallest player. Um, Isaac Howard, who was the last pick of the first round, Sorry, 31st pick, went to the Tampa Bay Lightning, walked up with a America belt, white pants, and uh, a uh, he, he had the fridge turtleneck with a nice uh, gold chain. He was dressed like Jack Harlow. Yes, and uh, and they asked him about it afterwards, and he said, I'm, I think I'm the best looking guy here, so I decided to be the best dressed too. The I love that. American program is churning out. All they do is churn out kids like that. Uh, dude, they're going to... Canada has got to figure it out because America is going to run the show. I was saying that on the up. stream last night. I think Canada, Hockey Canada, if it survives. Well, Hockey Canada is fucked, and obviously we'll get to that in a later episode. Yeah, but but if it survives, the way it develops has to change forever because we're already falling behind the U.S. program now. And it's going to take Fast. four or five years to rehab and change Hockey Canada to just catch up. And you want to be in Hockey Canada. You want to be ahead of the curve. Yeah, and I, I think I think we're in big trouble, and I think you're going to start to see the results in the U18s, and then you're going to start to see it in the World Championships in the NHL, and then you're going to start to see it at the Olympics. There's always the women's team. Steve, who's the thank kid, God for that? Who's the kid who grew up in Scottsdale? Oh and man, fucking played with Matthews in his spare time. Uh, I don't remember. Oh my god, I think he won the first round. He's unbelievable. Anyways, yeah, that program they're going to dominate. I was trying to look for his name, but I can't find. It. I I can't get my notes, but. Um, there's so many talented uh, players out of that program. I'm very jealous of America right now. Prediction for today. Uh, so the Leafs have a second round pick and a third round pick. Um, I think they'll trade down with one of those picks. Uh, but if they don't, there are lots of <gasps> players with the Chicago. We got to trade. We got to trade. What? Oh, what? The Detroit Red Wings have acquired, have acquired Billy Husso from the St. Louis Blues. No! <laughs> third round pick in 2020. That's it! Yeah, in the 2022 draft. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> now, there's no contract done as of yet. So it's just the negotiating rights, and they paid a third for it. I'm oh, assuming they that's think. That's actually they, kind of a lot. I'm assuming they yeah. think they can get it done. Wow, that's actually kind of a wow. lot. Wow. And I'm going to make it about the Leafs. You bet your ass. Um, that sort of sets a bar, interestingly, for McKayev a little bit. McKayev. But why? Uh, for negotiating rights. Oh, but, Pro- but probably but not. Russo had a great year. Yes. So uh, this is where I dial it back a little. They're not going to get as much for Mikheyev as they do for Husso, but um, maybe they'll get more than they got for Hyman, uh, which is nothing. I'm still salty. <laughs> I'm still uh, cheering for anything. Jesse, that was, I've never heard a human make that noise. Yeah. Your scream sometimes. I'm like, I, uh, yeah, I've never he- heard a human make that noise who wasn't dying. Steve Eiserman, everybody. You what? Steve Eiserman. Oh. Genius. Are you a Red Wings fan now? <laughs> Favorite team. You gonna get a <laughs> no, like, Casper jersey? Fuck, it's uh I guess Campbell's coming back. Like D- Dubas's words last night lend to Campbell coming back. It did. It was kind of weird. When he was like, oh, this trade opens us up to get any U- UFA goalie we want, including Jack Campbell. Like, thanks, Dubas. So you're going to try and bring back Campbell now. I guess that's good because he proved he can be a very good starting goaltender. And that's not the reason the Toronto Maple Leafs lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Jack Campbell was not at fault for them losing that series. So he can compete with the best team. Kevin Papetti had a tweet basically, listen, predict who the Leafs goalies are going to be next year. So we know they want, <laughs> they want a number of things. They want cheap goalies and they want good goalies. Well, I think you can get one of each. I think you can do that. So I think their tandem next year is going to be Kemper, Shalgren. Leafs? Yeah. Really? 
I don't know, but here's the thing with Kemper, man. I like it. The, uh, the eye thing, he had to retrain his eyes. Won the cup. He won a Stanley Cup like two you, weeks ago. Uh, he saw an optometrist, I think it was two or three times a day. Yes. Throughout the playoffs. I mean, like, I don't know. Hope, hopefully he heals up. He played well enough to win the cup. So I, and, and what's interesting too, we need to, Nadelkovic Huso is going to be a very interesting tandem if Huso signs in Detroit. But don't they still have Jonathan Bernie? No, he's, no, in, the Jer- devil, he's in Jersey. Yeah. And he may never play again. We're not sure yet because he's he had some pretty bad injuries. Oh, like he, really? Shit. Uh, and Jersey's in the market for a goalie. This is why I don't know that Jack, like, I think Jack Campbell's gone. I think for sure that is a for sure thing. Edmonton, New Jersey, there's a lot of teams that want to pay a lot of money. With Marc Andre Fleury off the board, that money goes up even further. <sighs> I'm going to say it right now a third round pick is too much for negotiating rights. Mm. Until, unless you get him signed. Yeah. They, I guess. they wanted him. Yeah. They wanted him. I, uh, Seems like a lot. I, I just want to say, Oilers having success with Hyman and Campbell might kill me. <laughs> it might. Mm. I'll be sad. Won't you be sad? I won't be sad. As, like, if, listen, I'm that sad. That sounds like you're going to be I'll sad. I'll be sad if the Leafs are not also successful. If they get Kemper. Fair. And the Leafs will be successful. If they get Kemper, we shouldn't be upset about it. Yeah, they'll be going fine. To I also think people are like, oh, they cleared a lot of salary with that. What, are they, what else are they going to do? I think Justin Hall is going to move, I think, today. Oh. And if not, then right before next week. People are going to be in the... It, everybody wants a right shot D-man who can play uh, a little bit of penalty kill Fuck. and Steve has to go. second round. <laughs> yeah, I got to go. But... Uh, oh, he's going to see JS. This, Pick up the phone. Oh, get out of here. Here, sorry. What the... Who is this? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm very important. So I'm going right. to walk off. We'll see you next week. And we got the SDPN party tonight at Lacage, or as Jesse likes to call it, the KG. The KG. <laughs> Bell Center. Hey, listen, thanks so much for tuning in. We love you, and we will see you Monday. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction, Canada's Sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.